Hey, it's Jared with Ditch Auto, and today we're gonna to take a look at how I shoot these videos. Um, it's gonna be kind of a quick and dirty look. Um, I'm gonna take this camera here and point it at the camera that is currently filming me, and I'm just kinda of gonna walk you through the setup and what is there. And then, um, though I'm filming with a Sony A7S right now, it's connected to an Atomos Ninja and uh, with that Atomos digital recorder, that's what's actually doing the recording. Um, we're not actually filming uh, and saving anything internally on the camera using the typical SD card. We're going straight into the Atomos, um, and when I do the Atomos video, I'll explain that. So let's switch cameras. All right, so I'm just gonna be pointing to things here and kind of explaining to you what they are. So um, a good tripod obviously is important. I'm um, constantly using a tripod to support the camera and the other objects that are mounted to it. Um, a good tripod is a great investment because um, especially one that is flexible. Uh, this tripod um, can handle a lot of weight, so even if I have to add more equipment, I'm not gonna run into a problem where the tripod can't stabilize it. Um, I have a fluid head on here, which doesn't really get used much here in the studio because this camera setup stays pretty much fixed. However, when I'm shooting out in the field, having a nice fluid head means that you're gonna be able to get nice movements, um, nice pans, and, and any movement that you wanna make uh, that's when you're locked down to a tripod. Um, to be completely honest, the majority of the time we're not doing a whole lot of moves like that. Um, and I could probably get away with using something less than this. But I like having a sturdy tripod set up here. When we switched over, or when I switched over to start shooting with the Sony cameras, uh, one of the things that um, has been an issue since even DSLR cameras have became um, a filming uh, kind of a filming tool um, is the inability to have mounts on them for other equipment. Um, you can see here I have the Atomos Ninja Blade um, attached and I have it facing me where I'm usually sitting um, and I do that because I like to be able to see the screen and be able to see if I'm framed up correctly um, and just kind of uh, visual check because I'm usually in here filming by myself. Um, so the Ninja Blade is facing towards me so that I can see it. It's connected to the camera uh, using an HDMI cable, um, and then it's attached using this articulating arm from Zacuto that's mounted to the cage that I have on the camera. Now the reason that there's a cage around the camera is so that I have more mounting points. Um, I don't like the idea of hanging a camera off of your hot shoe or hanging a monitor off of your hot shoe um, or any other mounting point on your camera. The camera wasn't designed for that. So with this Movcam uh, cage, I'm able to mount more things to it and not uh, you know, hurt my camera or risk breaking something on my camera. Um, so that's why I have this cage and I opted to go with the rail system as well and the extension so that I can um, you know, adapt my camera. I have a shoulder mount rig that I use this setup on. I just slide it into the shoulder mount rig and then I'm ready to go. Um, and so it's, it's a very flexible system. I could pull this off the tripod, I could slide this right into, um, into my shoulder mount system and then I'm ready to go. So this is the Sony A7S. This is not the latest model. This is the first A7S. Um, I have the 2470 f4 lens on it. And the reason that I'm using this lens is, uh, and not um, maybe a prime lens or something with more, uh, you know, more of a telephoto, is simply just the size of the room and what we typically do in here. Most of the time, the framing is the same. Uh, we have the table showing and myself. Sometimes I do an overhead camera, and, um, and this is pretty, pretty basic. But having the 2470 here allows me to zoom out if we're doing something with more people, or zoom in if I'm just maybe talking and I don't need to show the table, I could zoom in a little bit. It's a pretty flexible lens for, um, for this room. 
Now I wish the room was longer and so that I can use a maybe a 70 to 200 lens instead because um, when you're shooting on a green screen, I found that the, uh, the further away you can get the camera from the background and your subject, the better, because then you can zoom in. And when you zoom in, there's more compression and it makes it easier to key out the background. But I've got it pretty much dialed down in here to where it's really easy for us to key out the background um, using uh, Adobe Premiere Pro without any special extensions or anything like that. So that's the camera setup. Like I said, I typically don't shoot to the SD card in the camera. Um, I usually shoot to the Ninja Blade just because it's got a hard drive that I could pop right out of it and then go and take to my computer and I don't have to worry about SD cards. There's also a terabyte of storage in here so I could film all day long if I wanted to without even worrying about running out of, uh, of memory on an SD card. Um, so that I don't have to worry about batteries, you can see maybe that there's a cord right here, and that cord is uh, an AC adapter for the Sony A7S that allows me to plug the camera directly into AC power so I don't have to worry about batteries. And then this cord right here coming out of the bottom of the Atomos is um, an AC plug as well, which allows me to plug directly in, I don't have to worry about batteries. This cable that isn't currently plugged in is uh, goes to a mixer, which I have off camera here, um, and that's what controls um, our uh, uh, our audio when I'm not shooting with a um, a wireless lapel like I am now. Since I'm moving around with a wireless lapel, you know, speak into a microphone, the audio would sound weird in here. But let me pan up really quick just so that you can see kind of off camera up above here. You can see I have a shotgun microphone, um, and then there's also the camera that we use for our overhead. Um, off camera, not super glamorous. Um, you can even see my mount up on the ceiling is simply pipe fitting uh, fittings that I purchased from Home Depot, and uh, I'll probably go more into detail uh, about that in another video. So our setup here is pretty simple. I mean, there's um, there's obviously uh, not a lot of this equipment is extremely cheap. Um, you know, a lot of this stuff is, is especially when I bought it, was expensive. Of course, the price of that camera has came down. The price of this recorder has came down. Um, but most of it is, is still kind of pricey. However, it's about workflow for me and how fast I can get things done. Um, the, we also have the Rode Filmmaker Kit that I keep uh, the Rode Link attached to the top of the Movcam. Uh, move cam or whatever and uh, I use that when I need to use wireless on myself I have the other end of that uh, the um, the transmitter with the wireless lapel and I, I did a video review of the Rode Filmmaker kit I'll link that in the description below this video uh, in case you're interested in that so what I wanted to do is just show you kind of the general setup here and uh, explain a little bit as to why I have it set up the way that I do um, and then we're going to go more into detail with the, uh, the Ninja Blade because the Ninja Blade is really where it's at uh, for me just in helping me keep my workflow uh, very fast because turnaround time is obviously really important. We want to get videos done and out as quickly as possible. So thanks for checking out this video and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon on another Ditch Auto video.